Hi, it's Mr. Anderson, and today I'm going to talk about meiosis. Meiosis is the process by which gametes are formed. And so in humans, that's going to be sperm and egg. When the first microscopes were made, people looked at sperm under the microscope, and they assumed that there were tiny little humans tucked away in the head of each sperm. We know that this is ridiculous, and what's really tucked away in the head of a sperm is going to be nuclear material or chromosomes that are transferred from uh, males to females. And so the one thing I wanted to start with today is, is the importance of meiosis. And so this is a picture of my family when I was a little kid. And so this is my dad, and this is my mom. These are my siblings, and this right here is me as a little kid. And if you look at this family, the thing that'll jump out right away is that my mom has red hair and none of the rest of us do. And we all look different than our parents. And so that's the function of meiosis. That's the function of sex. It's to make sure that your offspring are different than you. Because if we're all the same, then we're all susceptible to the same diseases. And so before we can talk too much about meiosis, we should get this out of the way. What is diploid and what is haploid? Diploid essentially means that you have two complete sets of every gene, or two complete sets of the chromosomes. So in humans, we have 46 chromosomes. That means we have 23 pair. You can see this right here is a karyotype. And if it was a male, it would be one X and one Y chromosome. And if it's a female, it'd have two X chromosomes. But basically, you have two copies of chromosome one, two copies of chromosome two, two copies of chromosome three. And so if we only had three chromosomes, this is basically what we'd look like. And our sperm and egg would be haploid. They'd have one set of all the chromosomes. And then our uh, somatic cells, or all the other cells inside our body, are going to be diploid, or they're going to have two complete sets of chromosomes. And so basically, life starts when haploid cells combine. They form a diploid zygote, and that eventually forms you. And so what I'm really talking about is the human life cycle. In other words, through a process called meiosis, we're going to make gametes. Those gametes will eventually combine back together again through a process called fertilization, and that's going to make something called a zygote, or a fertilized egg. Now that one egg is going to quickly divide into 2 and 4 and 8 and 16 and 32, so through the process of mitosis, that's going to form a new organism again. And those new organisms are going to produce gametes through a process called mitosis, or meiosis, and this whole thing goes over and over again. And so if you look on this diagram, everything up here in the gray is going to be haploid, and everything down here is going to be diploid. So the zygote's diploid, you are diploid, and the only things that aren't are going to be the gametes that are formed. And so cartoon style, this is what it looks like. Through meiosis, males make sperm, females make eggs, and those sperm are going to fertilize an egg to make a zygote, and then through mitosis it makes us again. Now know this, that not all organisms are going to have the same life cycle. Sometimes when you look at, for example, a liverwort, you're mostly going to see haploid organisms, and you're not going to see diploid organisms. But generally in humans, we're diploid, and so are zygotes. And so before we get to my meiosis, let's talk about mitosis, and we're going to go real simple to start. And so basically, think of this as the nuclei in a very simple cell. In this one, we're going to say 2n equals 2 because it's a diploid set, cell. In other words, it has two copies of its one chromosome. You can see that this one's pink because it comes from mom, and this one we'll say is blue because it comes from dad. And so as we go through the mitotic divisions, basically what happens is those two chromosomes are going to make copies of themselves. So we call those sister chromatids, and they'd be connected here in the middle in something called a centromere. Next thing that will happen is that they're going to meet together at the metaphase plate, so they're going to line up along the middle. Uh, what you would really get is spindle fibers that are going to attach to this one and are going to attach over to this one, and, and likewise you're going to have spindle fibers down here. Remember in us, we're going to have a lot more chromosomes than this, but basically what happens is they're pulled to either side in mitosis. That would be anaphase. So what did we end up with? Well, this would be one nuclei, where 2n equals 2, and this is another nuclei, where 2n equals 2. And these two nuclei are exactly the same, and that's the function of mitosis. We want to make exact copies of the cells. So when you go from that zygote to the organism, all the DNA and all the cells in your body is identical. Now we're going to go through meiosis. So meiosis starts the exact same way. We start with a diploid cell where 2n equals 2, one from mom, one from dad. We copy those uh, chromosomes. So during the S phase of interphase, we'll make exact copies. So this looks exactly the same as mitosis, but now it gets a little weird. So basically what will happen is these two, we call those homologous chromosomes, are going to come together. They're going to meet in the middle. And so during prophase, they'll um, wind around each other. And they'll wind around each other so tight 
that something's going to happen here. Watch really carefully on these chromosomes. So basically what's going to happen is little bits of the female chromosome are going to switch places with the male. In other words, this little blue portion came from this one, and this little pink one came from this portion. We call this crossing over. In other words, since they're all the same length, since they have the same genes, although they may have different copies of the genes, it's really easy for them to bond together and form new chromosomes. So what happens next? Well, they've met in the middle. There'd be a spindle fiber here. And so basically, they'll pull apart. And as they pull apart, those chromosomes are going to be pulled in either direction, and then they're going to pull apart again. And so the big difference that happened right there, I don't know if you caught it, is that in mitosis there's only one division, but in meiosis there's two divisions. And so what we've done is we've essentially made four nuclei. Those nuclei are haploid now. Remember we started with 2n equals 2, and now we just have n equals 1. And so each of these are a nuclei that had, would have a different chromosome in it. And so um, each of these in males would form a brand new sperm. In females it's a little different. Uh, in males you make sperm your whole life from the day you're born to the day you die. Or excuse me, from the day you go through puberty to the day you die. You're going to be making sperm over and over again. But in females you've actually undergone most of this meiotic process before you're even born. Males make trillions of sperm during their lifetime, and they make them their whole life. Females just make a few eggs before they're born, and they lavish them with attention. Uh, in females, one of these nuclei will be the chosen one, and that will become the one egg, and the other ones really don't become anything. And so if we do this in a, in a quick little diagram here, basically this would be a cell where it is um, 2n equals 4. So we're going to start here with four chromosomes. It's going to copy itself. There's going to be crossing over. There's going to be a division and then another division. And so in this case, n equals 2. But the big highlights here is that we've got crossing over right here where they're actually switching bits of the chromosome. You can see that there's one division during meiosis 1 and then another division during meiosis 2. And so basically we have four cells. In males, each of these would become a sperm. In females, one becomes an egg. Now if you think about that, it doesn't look like we get much variety because we're only getting four cells out of that. But the reason you are special, the reason you're the only one, in the words of Barney the dinosaur, you're the only one like you is because of these four processes right here. First one's independent assortment. Basically what happens in independent assortment? Well, if we look at these chromosomes, they could have lined up like this with the blue on top or they could have lined up with the blue on the bottom. And so the odds of blue being on the top when they line up would be 1 and 2, and the odds of blue on the bottom would be 1 and 2. And so you might think that's not much variability at all. But if you think about it, how many chromosomes did we have? Do you remember? We had 23. And so actually the possibilities that you can get through independent assortment is 2 to the 23rd. So we can get billions of possibilities just by having each of those chromosomes assort independently. And that's why we get, just in, in a simple dihybrid cross in the peas, we're going to get something that looks like this. Next thing is going to be crossing over. Remember, those chromosomes are going to cross over. So there will be a key, uh, coming together here. We call that synapsis. And basically what you get are chromosomes that have never existed before. And then the last thing that happens is random fertilization. That one sperm has to fertilize that one egg. And so the odds of that happening with a couple, the odds of two people with separate sperm and separate eggs creating organisms that look exactly the same or people that look the same is almost impossible. It's one in 70 trillion times that that would happen. Now you could have a fertilized egg that divides in half and have an identical twin. But basically all siblings are going to look different because of independent assortment, crossing over, and random fertilization. But this whole thing is built on the process of meiosis. It makes offspring that are different. That gives them protection against diseases. And it's really the stuff of life. And I hope that's helpful.